Thank you very much for a great lecture. Are there any questions or remarks? Yeah, up there. Okay, so uh, the question, as I understand it, is, um, is that, uh, okay, so here we are, we, are, we are taking a very simple model for our data, so it's very sparse data, but, uh, and, um, okay, but for more realistic uh, data sets, like, like images of, say, people or something, um, the, uh, the, the space of images is, is I mean, um, it is sparse in certain ba uh, bases, and this, this is what, like, say, the single pixel camera exploits, that uh, if, you, if you look at an Im uh, image in, say, a wavelet basis, it is often very, very um, very sparse or, or compressed. Um, but it, it is true that, that um, in real life applications, it, um, your data has more structure than just being sparse. Um, it has a certain shape or certain correlations and so forth. And um, yes, we would, we would like to incorporate um, the additional information beyond sparsity, uh, beyond uh, additional information to, um, uh, you know, uh, about our, that we already know about our, our, our data to improve these algorithms even further and maybe be able to have, reduce uh, even further the number of measurements we need, get better accuracy and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a very active area of research. So you know, there's, there's literally now 100 papers on compressed sensing. And, um, and, and a, a one big problem is how do you, how do you incorporate um, prior knowledge about, about your data set? Okay. Um, at present, there, is, well, um, there, there are some ad hoc things you can do. Um, but, um, um, L1 is, is, is remarkably, I mean, as a general purpose tool, it, it's, it's remarkably hard to beat. Um, there are other metrics you can try to minimize which are more complicated, but um, they're not convex and, and computationally they're, they're very, uh, they're intractable um, to do uh, at least exactly. Um, uh, whereas L1 at least you can, you can always do by linear programming and it's always feasible. Um, uh, there are various tweaks you can do. You, 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 can, you can weight some coefficients to have more significance than others. If you believe some measurements are more reliable or, or somehow more significant, uh, people would definitely do that. Um, you can tweak the basis uh, that, that, you, uh, that you think is the most relevant and so forth. There, there are some, um, there's some work in this direction. It, it, um, this is by no means, the, this is only the beginning of the story. People are definitely, there are, there are lots of tweaks to this algorithm that I, I, I didn't mention. There are, um, there, there, are, uh, there, are more, um, there are variants of basis pursuit that are, that are faster and just as accurate and so on and so forth. Yeah, so it, this, there's, a, there's a lot of work in this direction. Any other questions? Okay, so the question is whether um, I myself uh, study compressed sensing for the pure mathematical, mathematical interest or because I had the applications in mind. So, um, so I got into this in about 2002. Um, I, was, I was at um, and, uh, my home university, UCLA. We have an institute of pure and applied mathematics, and we, uh, we hold these, um, these uh, special um, um, uh, semesters where, or quarters where we, we take people from both pure and applied mathematics and from industry and from other sciences together to talk about um, common problems. And uh, I met Emmanuel Candes there, um, who I knew before, and, uh, and he, had, he was working on, the, on these um, problems 
as an applied mathematician, and he, um, and in fact, he was uh, he had he was working towards his results, and he needed some uh, uh, some mathematical uh, um, lemmas, and 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 he, so he gave me this, this purely mathematical problem as a challenge for me, and um, okay, and okay, at first I, I told him I couldn't do it, um, like after working for, working for a while, we, we actually managed to, to to solve this toy problem. Um, one of our first results on, on Fourier reconstruction, and then it just opened the door to all these other um, mathematical results. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm very excited to see that this. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pure mathematician by, by training, and, it's, and you know, the vast, vast majority of what I do is, 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 is pure, has no direct application. But I'm very happy that um, that part of what I did here has since been um, taken on by many people, you know, by engineers and, and, and medical images and so forth. And there are lots and lots. Of, I mean, um, um, these algorithms are now used in in, um, in MRI. Um, in MRI um, uh, reconstruction now, they actually are much faster and give and give better, better imaging. Um, and one day they will speed up MRI to the point where we can get videos. That's the hope. Um, I myself don't work in that because I, I don't have any direct experience in this imaging. Um, and there's there are now hundreds of people working in this in this field, and so it, it's it's very crowded actually. Uh, lots of developments. Um, I'm I'm still interested, but uh, I'm more than happy to let all these these people these uh, ex experts uh, uh, do the good work. Any more questions? If not, let's uh, thank uh, Terry Tal for two great lectures. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.